हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल द टॉपिक फॉर टुडे इज गोइंग टू बी लॉजिस्टिक रिग्रेशन हाउ टू अप्लाई ऑन प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ डिफॉल्ट एंड बिफोर दैट वट आर डमी वेरिएबल्स वाई डू वी क्रिएट डमी वेरिएबल्स हाउ एग्जैक्टली द प्रैक्टिकल इंप्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ लॉजिस्टिक रिग्रेशन इज गोइंग ऑन द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ डिफॉल्ट मॉडल सो इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो इन द सेम प्ले लिस्ट वी हैव स्पोकन अबाउट लॉजिस्टिक रिग्रेशन फ्रॉम द वेरी बेसिक नाउ लेट्स मूव इट फॉरवर्ड लेट्स टेक इट फॉरवर्ड एंड लेट्स डिस्कस मच मोर फ्रॉम द परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ डिफॉल्ट सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग योर टाइम लेट मी टेक यू फॉरवर्ड so guys first and foremost before going into the implementation we should be able to understand the exact meaning of how, why we are applying how we are applying logistic regression in a pd model and moreover why we need to create dummy variable so you will get all those answers in today's session now so before we go in the deep let's start from very basic here okay so the number one thing when you are preparing a model so this is just the step before we will create the probability of default model so you need to be very careful what are the terms i would be using in this video make sure you are not skipping anything okay so the number one thing when you build a model you need a default definition okay default definition so you need to tell the model that what is the default definition what does that mean that what are the criteria that you are defining that a customer is a default customer usually as per market standard 90 plus dpd what does that mean 90 plus day past due that is equal to 3 month of non payment behavior in any of the product let's say your loan credit card if you are not paying your emi for consecutively 3 month then you are considered as a default customer okay so this is the default definition then what is a historical window historical window what is historical window how old data you are using for the prediction so sometime usually you can consider 24 month and in some cases it will be 36 months but general market practice is 24 month so you consider last 24 month data and then you do the calculation on the basis of that now this is number 2 number 3 the bread and butter will be you can ask what is pd now in detail what is pd in detail so pd stands for probability of default what is that that i have a customer he is buying credit card from my bank so just like him i multiply it with 1000 so i have 1000 customer like this who are buying credit card from me then i have a customer or 10000 customer like this who are buying loan from me now for bank it's very essential that bank should be able to know that how many people out of this 1000 who are applying for the loan or credit card and this 10000 applying for loan so how many of the customer can default in future why so that the bank can maintain a capital that even if the people are defaulting some of the people are defaulting let's say this 1000 let's say five people default out of this 10000 let's say 25 people default so what is the money he is like these five are defaulting then what is the money these 25 are defaulting bank should be able to keep that much of money at least minimum to run the business what do i mean by that i'll tell you so i am a customer of a bank now when bank is giving the loan i have a savings savings account i don't want my money to get at risk so for that to keep my money safe this capital comes into the picture this capital bank need to maintain then this is a clear guideline from the from the all the regulatory bodies so there are two most common one is basel then second model is IFRS 9 these are two models which are heavily used or guidelines provided by the regulatory bodies to all the banks in across the world europe us whatever it is okay let me just go a bit down yeah it's much more visible to all of you now 
if you try to understand why we are calculating probability of default so that we can get to know how much the money is at risk again on the basis of that probability of default what bank can do so many things bank will put more interest for these five people let's say for rest of the member the bank is giving a loan at the cost of eight percent but for these people five people bank will say 8.5 so that's why your credit score your credit history everything comes into the picture now this is the probability of default and nothing more than this you know uh, need to know to understand the probability of default now let's talk about the role of logistic regression here in the previous video i explained what is logistic regression so let's say you are trying to calculate the probability of default now in logistic regression model we have sigmoid function let me draw one s here i have x and y okay so let's say i have income of all the people these people who are taking credit card or loan let's say i take only the loan case for now otherwise you will get confused that whether i'm talking about credit card or loan so let's say let's talk about loan loan and that is also house loan we call it mortgage also now the income is there at one side and this talks about pd column y talks about probability of default why i am applying a significant sigmoid function here let's say in pd i already told you in logistic regression we have either one or zero and then 0 0.5 probability always falls between one to zero okay now this is the medium level zero means what non-default okay depending on the usual market practice that's how we define this one and one stands for default so if the probability is one there is 100 percent chance that that event will happen that is what is the event in this case default okay so we have two classes this will be your class a where all those people who are defaulting will come and then class b so usually in real life scenario class b is the majority hardly there would be three to five percent people who will default that is also the maximum number i'm talking about it's hardly one to three percent i mean to say one up to three one two three i don't mean that up to one to three bracket that's what i meant now this is a sigmoid function and in the previous video we spoke about sigmoid so i would expect all of you to know that now okay let's move forward let's talk about the equation we use for this logistic regression model now let's talk about equation you need to understand in the previous video i gave you the generic equation i'll come on to that but let's talk about much more in detail on the granular level okay so to understand the equation the first thing you should know why we have that sigmoid function so what is the meaning of that the meaning is that you are doing a classification problem here you are classifying the group into default and non-default that's why you have a sigmoid function there is a class up there who are defaulting then you have a class there down which is non-defaulting so to drive that to calculate that you need an equation and equation stands for you calculate the log of what p what is p here p stands for probability of default so log of p equal to i will write then log of what probability and 1 minus p this is self-explanatory equal to coefficient which is beta plus beta 1 x1 beta 2 x2 up to you can say beta n x n now what is beta here is a coefficient which we use now what is x 
x is your what independent variable independent variable what is the independent variable it can be anyone your age income salary age uh, uh, salary not salary it can be either your uh, employment type it can be your house type let's say you are on a rented house or on your own house it can be anything all those variables which are there those are your independent variable which are ultimately helping you to calculate what your default and non-default that is your dependent variable which is y now in this case if you see independent variables are different so this can be age x1 means can be age this is your employment status xn can be your employment type anything can be there okay now this is the whole equation this is your equation which you need to answer when somebody asks you what is the equation you are using to calculate your probability of default now what is the base of this equation so the base is the same which i told you this is the generic one p equal to 1 1 divided by 1 plus e to power minus x x is your independent variable e is your coefficient which is constant the value is 2.718 and we call it what euless constant euless constant so this is the generic equation now the value of x how you calculate x so you can understand this whole this part this which i am highlighting this like this coefficient b not this whole is equal to x this one so this is your generic equation this is your specific equation to the probability of default which you use okay now let's go a bit more down to understand some more important points okay now fourth point what is a dummy variable why we are creating the dummy dummy variable okay which is the topic also dummy variables so guys try to understand when you are calculating a model in a model you don't want to keep so many unnecessary variable like your gender uh, loan type which are moreover categorical variable which are not giving any mathematical information to calculate a model you need all the variables which are moreover numeric not the character variables so to transform those you need dummy variables how you do that let's say there is a variable called loan type so there are so many type of loan people are taking let's say home loan auto loan then uh, it can be their personal loan for their marriage people these days want to do expensive marriages so they are taking so much of loan so that can be there now here comes the dummy variable okay so we need dummy variable to categorize them let's say i make a dummy variable loan auto when i will make my model i will define this loan auto equal to one if auto this auto this one okay then i will mention else zero so this is my indicator one will be acting as a temporary indicator for this value similarly you can define for the other also let's say your loan personal which is again your dummy variable equal to one if it's what personal make sure you are writing the correct spelling and everything otherwise this may give you a error so make sure you are checking the spelling correctly when you are defining it now most important question comes why we are doing all this this dummy variable creation why we need all these dummy variables okay so Number one, I told you model need mathematical variable. It basically needs mathematical information so that the model is more concrete and it's more descriptive. It's not more descriptive. It's more discrete in, in terms of nature. So that's why you do that categorization. That's why this is the logistic regression because logistic regression is a type of classification. Try to understand. Okay. All, all things which we are talking here are correlated with each other. Okay. Then second reason why we need the value into terms of dummy. So because 
the pd value always fall between 0 to 1 so we don't want unnecessary variable to create noise here okay and then third reason is because we have to address or we can say we and follow compliance by regulators now what is regulators it can be anything for india just try to understand its rbi reserve bank of india is a regulator in india they make sure that all the banks are driving everything now all these dummy variables, if you are going to use so many of character variable, try to understand a very basic concept. If you are using so many character variable and RBI ask or the governing body, let's say in Canada, US, Europe, they have other governing body, let's say federal government, they ask you to give the audit report. And if you send a report where so many character variables are there, they will actually hit you back. They ask what, what they do. Let's say RBI sometime will take help from KPMG to add audit all these big four let's say ENY PWC Deloitte if you send that report to them they will say these guys are maintaining so many character variables this is very unnecessary because bank is moreover interested in the numeric variable they want to make sure that you are addressing all the numeric concerns which are very important so these are some of the reasons why we do create this dummy variable. Okay. On that note, I will wrap up this video. I hope if you like this video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you want to support me, please share this video with your maximum friends so that I have a better reach. That gives me so much of motivation. Thank you everybody for all your wonderful comments. If you are uh, watching my videos, I know so many of you are putting so many comments. I want to request all of the other member also. If you can put your comment, I can increase my content uh, frequency also and I can increase the quality much. I'm working on that. So just need all of your support. On that note, thank you so much everybody. All the best.